Hello and welcome to Portfolio Matters. In today's podcast, I will be talking about the Kalecki-Levy formula and why it means that US corporate profits are currently too high and will have to fall. Now, I'm not going to be talking about stocks, so I won't do a full disclaimer, but as always, please do your own research and a full disclaimer can be found at the end. Okay, so in uh, last week's weekly, we showed you this chart. And I commented to Richard that US corporate earnings were way above trend, and that this was a direct result of the fiscal spending during the pandemic. And as the fiscal balance returned to more normal levels, so US corporate earnings would have to fall back towards the trend line. Now, he then asked me to justify it, and it was just too much to do during the weekly. So I've spun this out, and we're going to go through it now. So some background before we get going. The Kalecki-Levy formula was actually independently arrived at by two people. So Mikhail Kalecki was a Polish economist, a Marxist economist, and he worked this out having read Marx's Das Kapital, whereas Jerome Levy was an American businessman who derived the formula separately while trying to understand where his own profits were coming from. Much more detail and a really good explanation of the formula can be found on the Nathan Tankus substack. I will provide a link. So to begin with, let's think of a very simple economy in which there's only the corporate sector and the household sector. And any wages spent by the household sector are spent in the corporate sector. Household sector equals wages, business revenues equal people spending those wages on things. Now, as long as households spend 100% of their wages, then you have a circular economy. So whatever is received by the household sector as wages, they spend on goods and services from the corporate. But what happens if the household sector then decides to save? So in this diagram, the household sector is receiving $1,000 in wages and it decides to save $60. Well, the revenues for the business sector fall by $60 to $940, but their wage bill remains $1,000. Saving by the household sector reduces corporate profits in a direct one-to-one -one ratio. So profits of the corporate sector equals minus savings by the household sector. And if we think about things the other way, now let's say the household sector decides to borrow money and instead of saving, dissaves and increases its expenditure to $1,060. Well, the wage bill of the corporate sector remains $1,000, but its revenues have gone up to $1,060. Now, you'll say that, well, they need to provide more goods and services. A company that is producing widgets will need to buy in more um, subcomponents, et cetera. And so, you know, that can't be true. They can't be making $60 profit because actually their wage bill and their input bill is also going to go up. But if you think about it, we're looking at the business sector in aggregate. So the widget company that needs to buy in more subcomponents, it will be spending money within the corporate sector. So the corporate sector in aggregate is seeing its total revenues go up by $60 and its total wage bill is unchanged. Now, if the wage bill changed, so actually companies had to bid up for more workers to fulfill the new contracts, well then 
the household sector would not be dissaving by $60. So the dissaving of $60 is only possible because wages haven't gone up. So in summary, anything saved by households from their wages does not flow back into the corporate sector as revenues. Household savings will reduce corporate revenues without affecting their costs, and therefore savings equals minus profits. Profits equals minus household savings. So that's part one. We now think about the government sector. And in this diagram, pause, take a look. The government is running a net deficit of $65. Now, if we assume that there is no change in the household sector savings, the, so the household is spending all of its wages and all of its income from the government, then again, the corporate sector will see its revenues increase by $65 in aggregate, whereas its costs do not change and therefore a government deficit equals corporate profits. So we've now established that profits equal government deficits minus household savings. And finally, the external sector. Well, money spent on goods and services from abroad reduces the revenues of domestic corporations without affecting their costs. Therefore, the current account balance equals profits. Current account deficit equals falling profits. A current account surplus equals rising profits. So the full Kalecki levy formula is very simple. Profits equals government balance plus the household balance plus the current account balance. So a negative Budget balance for the government is good for profits. A negative household balance is good for profits. A positive current account balance is good for profits. Another way of looking at it is that the government budget balance plus the private sector balance plus the current account balance must equal zero, where the private sector balance is the household sector plus the corporate sector. Now, why does this matter? Well, this chart shows you the US federal deficit as a percentage of GDP. And during the pandemic, it absolutely exploded, rising from minus 5% of GDP to 15% of GDP. So according to the Kalecki-Levy model, that means that corporate profits must also have shot up. And we know from this chart, that that's exactly happened. Now, going back to this chart, you'll see that the US fiscal deficit is returning to normal. And so the fiscal impulse in 2022-23 is going to be very strongly negative. They're cutting the fiscal deficit. And that means that US corporate earnings must also come right back down. But these are the forecast earnings for the S&P 500 in 2022, which is the lower line, and 2023 in the upper line. And so the market is expecting US corporate earnings growth of the best part of 10% in 2023. And this is a chart from the FT showing that analysts are projecting US corporate earnings to keep growing in 24, 25. So in summary, during the pandemic, the US fiscal deficit expanded by approximately 10% of GDP. And according to the Kalecki-Levy formula, that would have lent, led to a massive rise in US corporate profits. And that's exactly what we've seen. But now the US federal deficit has fallen back again. And so those extraordinary corporate profits in the US must also fall back. 
but the market does not seem to have understood this. And that means that expectations are way too high. And when corporations start missing their earnings forecasts, you can expect the US stock market to fall. The same is true for much of the rest of the world, by the way. Bottom line is US corporate earnings expectations are too high and US corporations will therefore miss those estimates with lots of profits warnings. Profits warnings send share prices down. The S&P 500 is too high and will fall. Okay, that's it. Please can you press like and subscribe to the channel. And in the meantime, it's goodbye for me, Keith Jordan. Goodbye. Full disclaimer, the material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, We make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages or for any results obtained from the use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.